Thank you for tuning in to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV DJ Rain, and my guest today is Lauren Jones, a native from Mississippi that's done some great things. So stay tuned while we come back and to find out just a little bit more about what she has going on. <laughs> Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV DJ Rain, and the guest we have today is Lauren Jones. Lauren, how are you doing today? I'm doing so great. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Glad to have you. Uh, now, tell me a little bit about yourself, like coming up, because um, I, I see that you did some um, production work in Romeo and Juliet at what? Oh yeah, that goes way back. Yeah. Um, definitely junior high, and started out doing theater and plays just in high school. I had a fabulous teacher and he always encouraged me to do plays and he saw something in me and he just encouraged me and even when I was afraid and I didn't even know how to memorize my first lines, he was there supporting me and encouraged, encouraging me and um, he cast me as Juliet and that was my first real stage production. I mean there were some that I had done when I was younger but that was my first real mm -hmm. time to shine with the starring role. So um, so how, how did that, like is, is that where like the bug for acting? Uh, modeling started or is it, did that come from like something sure. in the family? Sure. Um, you know, I was doing it, I, I was always acting and modeling and doing dance. I did tap, ballet, jazz as a, as a little girl. So um, I always kind of grew up on the stage and I never knew that that would transform into a, a film career. Mm -hmm. um, and it was probably because I had moved to New York mm -hmm. um, that I had really gotten my first bug. Right. Or, you know, I, I was first kind of in awe of the lights and the camera and, and I was on Regis and Kathy Lee when I was living in New York and that was the beginning of the transformation from stage to film mm -hmm. and modeling. So, so like I, I know that you moved at a, at a young age. So, I did. So how was that like the, tra the transfer from all your friends to like this big thing of entertainment and lights and all that? Well it was both exciting and also challenging. Um, having grown up in Mississippi I had really strong roots and strong support system, a lot of friends and family. And when I moved to New York, all of a sudden, I mean, there were all these opportunities everywhere you turned. Um, the education system was different. The city was different. The opportunities were different. So um, it was definitely challenging, and I missed my family. But at the same time, I felt very supported to go for it. Right. So, um, so I did. I did. Right. I went for it. <laughs> so, so tell me, tell me about. Um, so when you went to when you went to New York, um, did you like? Did you have a plan that you you know when you went there? Did you already have like an agent? It was um, it was working with you. No, I mean when I moved to New York, I moved because my family had moved there. Okay. And um, the first year I was there, my mom encouraged me to enter a modeling contest for Seventeen magazine. Mm -hmm. They were looking for um, a new face for the magazine, and I was one of I'd say five hundred gorgeous young women who were auditioning for this role. And I never thought in a million years I would get it. I mean I was just a wholesome girl next door from Mississippi. I mean leg legitimately from Jackson, Mississippi. Right. And here I am in New York, and um, I'm looking around, and everyone was so um, ethnically diverse and, and, to me, exotic and gorgeous, and I, I didn't compare, in my opinion. And my mom said, just go for it. And I was, um, you know, narrowed down. I was picked one of 15, and I was just excited to be one of 15. And I'm looking at her in the crowd going, oh, my goodness, I can't believe it. And then I um, ended up winning the, the 17 National Modeling Contest back in 98. Really? I think it was 98. Yeah. And um, ended up being in the magazine. God, that makes me seem ancient. <laughs> and um, so tell that was me, the beginning. So what what like opportunities did that afford you being in that magazine? Because I'm sure a lot. Many. Um, it was the first time I was ever given the opportunity to appear on national television, and I was um, a guest on Regis and Kathy Lee when Kathy Lee was still there. So again, aging myself here, but um, now they have Kelly Ripa. Of course, and yeah. um, so I was on that show. I was a model, and I came out, and they had me dressed up in Ralph Lauren clothes, and I got to go down the runway, and I was a guest on the show. So that was, again, you know, my first kind of real yeah. TV exposure, and from there I gained an agent um, in New York City. So yeah. that was my first modeling, TV, then agent, all kind of in one little nutshell. Now I have to ask you because, like, I'm a big fan of the magazine, um, but how did you how did you get into Maxim? Oh goodness, um, this was years later. Um, I had been modeling and acting in New York City 
and I had moved to Los Angeles and I had done a photo shoot for Spike TV and the photos they said these photos are, are too good we don't want to just waste them with Spike TV let's let's send them to Maxim and the editors went crazy over the photos and I said oh my goodness I'm gonna be in Maxim I couldn't believe it I mean because the, the photos were very tasteful um, mm -hmm. um, in, a, in a very classy sexy buttoned up way right. and um, we had a, I think they did like a nine page international feature or maybe it was 14 pages I can't remember it was it was a lot and mm -hmm. it was in Mexico and Europe and all over and I, I couldn't believe it I was so nice. excited nice. I'm still really excited about that that was a lot of fun oh I bet I bet so yeah um, so you got Regis and uh, Kathy Lee, yes. right? Um, that, Seventeen Magazine, Maxim. Yes. Tell me some of the other publications you've been in. Oh, my goodness. Um, okay, so one of the most important for me was Oprah Magazine. Mm -hmm. um, I was in, living in Mississippi. I'd returned. I'd lived in Mississippi, born and raised here, moved to New York, um, lived in London, lived in L.A., and had moved back. And I got a call from the, um, I don't know if it was the editors or the, the beauty specialists at Oprah, and they said, what color is your hair right now? And I said, it's blonde, platinum blonde at the time. And they said, will you fly to New York and let us make you over and let us do a feature on you and talk about you? And I said, I would love to. Mm -hmm. So I flew to New York and they dyed my hair to a color kind of comparable to what it is now. Um, and the article was about being a blondeaholic because every year, no matter what I did, I always ended up being blonde. So like if I did Maxim, they dyed right. my hair blonde. Um, if I did a TV show, it was blonde. So. Um, okay. Oprah magazine for sure. Nice. Um, I know that I know like being in the entertainment industry like you now there's been some ups and downs. What do you think today is like one of your biggest accomplishments that you've done um, that's kind of you know kept you motivated? Um, my biggest accomplishment has definitely been my the shoe line. Um, to go from modeling to acting doing parts in film and then to create my own fashion label has been one of the most challenging, most exciting, most rewarding things that I've done so far and um, is that is that always been like a passion of yours like the mm -hmm. design thing? I love fashion I yeah. love fashion yes I love design I love creativity I love thinking of something and mm -hmm. making it come into fruition and right. seeing it manifest is to me something that's truly exciting and keeps me motivated mm -hmm. um, as an entertainer mm -hmm. I mean I feel like I've gone from you know model actress entertainer to designer and um, there's definitely an evolution there that keeps me motivated that's so. nice. um, well, when we come back, we're going to talk. We're going to get into talking about your film because I know you've been in a couple films. Yes. Uh, so we're going to find out a little bit more about that, uh, and we want to talk about your shoe line. Thank you. Um, awesome. Yeah, and and I understand you brought some with you. I did. I brought sure. a couple of things to show, nice. just for fun. Nice. I look forward to seeing it. Okay. Good. And we'll be right back uh, with Exposure TV and with Lauren Jones. For more information on any of Lauren Jones' collection, go to www.laurenjonescollection.com. Exposure TV is sponsored and produced by Peaches of On Location TV. Exposure TV, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. and Saturdays. 6.30 a.m. on Comcast Cable, Channel 18, Pad Network. Welcome back to Exposure TV, and we're here with my guest, Lauren Jones, and we're going to be talking about some of the, um, the film that you've done and um, some more of the ads and product endorsements. Uh, I know that you're in the movie Expendables. Tell me, tell me how that experience was. Oh, wow. It was a wonderful experience. Um, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I got to work hands-on, one-on-one with Sylvester Stallone. He wrote, direct, and starred in the film. So that was an incredible experience to see someone um, that famous mm -hmm. and to get to work with them and see how real they are. I mean, he's a real person. and that's. Was it intimidating at all, working with him? You know, I've been around so many celebrities, mm -hmm. and to me, they're just regular people who... Right have high aspirations um, so they it doesn't intimidate me now um, 
anytime I'm on stage or I know something's live, I'm intimidated. Right. But if I know it's taped, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, because I know you can mess up, and, and they mess up too. I mean, um, I've worked with some, some people who, who've had to take 20 outtakes for a very simple thing, you know, or hundreds of outtakes. So, um, I'm very comfortable in that sort of scenario. Um, and I'm not intimidated by those kinds of people. I'm actually inspired by them. Um, I love being around them. I get excited. Yeah. So um, Sylvester Stallone, uh, Mickey Rourke, and Jason Statham, Jet Li. Um, I was hanging around all these uh, kind of bad boys on set. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Wait, and what was the other film that you were in? Um, um, I was in Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3, that's it. Uh, yes. That's one of my favorite movies right there. Yeah, I had a lot of fun on that set. Um, it was a, a very small role. It was mm. one of my first. It was just a little cameo appearance, appearance no big deal. But I got to work with Sam Raimi, who is the director, mm -hmm. um, an incredible man, um, a visionary. Mm -hmm. I would love to work with him again one day, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but I didn't, um, the speaking role that I had didn't make it to the film. But I was okay with that because yeah. I wasn't ready and it probably sounded horrible anyway. So. Right. <laughs> and even in Expendables, I was uh, still very new to delivering lines on right. film. And it's, a, it's definitely a craft and art. So I, I wasn't, I'm still learning. It's definitely something that will, I will keep yeah. learning. Um, and I know like you endorse products like Metrex. Um. Yes, um, I was hired by Metrex to Metrix. endorse some of their fitness products, mm -hmm. um, some of their protein bars and supplements. Um, just talking about eating healthy, staying healthy, and they actually gave me the honor of being Miss Metrex a few years ago. Nice. So that was a lot of fun. I got to travel around and talk about eating healthy, and that's important to me. I like to teach children right. that eat, how to eat healthy yeah. and, and how eating healthy can be fun. It is. I mean, it's very important. Mm -hmm. I mean, to your health and your energy and everything in life. Oh yes. So yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, that's. That's a, that's a really good thing to actually be a role model for. I mean, not just young people, but people in general. Yes. Um, for, for doing things like that. And I mean, I've struggled with it. I mean, being in the public eye, I have to watch my weight as well. And like during the Christmas holidays, Thanksgiving, I yeah. want to eat everything. And and you're from Mississippi. And I'm from Mississippi. <laughs> we have the best food down here: fried pickles, fried okra, fried fried green tomatoes. Mm. I mean, we have fantastic food here. So. Um, I love it. I love food. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's talk about, um, you said you were in Fortune magazine? I was. What was tell, me, tell me about that. One of the very first modeling jobs I booked with a real agency um, was for Fortune magazine. And they actually had me as the model for the cover of the magazine, but uh, the editors felt that the cover was a little bit too sexy, even though it was, com I mean, I had a buttoned up collared shirt on. Mm. Um, and so they bumped it back to the table of contents, and it ended up being one of the most viewed table of contents that Fortune had ever had. So I got a lot of publicity off of really? that, and it just helped kind of um, help my career grow. And as a model, especially as a print model, I was able to book you know more and more campaigns, more endorsements, and it helped a lot. Nice. It was great. Nice. Uh, and then you know we, we talked about the e-money. Yes. Yeah. Tell me about that. E-money e is a recent job that I've um, been able to work with. Um, it's an advisor company. It's called E-Money Advisors, and it talks about um, financial advice for for businessmen, mm -hmm. and um, it's fantastic. I've, I've done three shots, three shoots with them, where we film about 12 to 24 commercials per shoot, and I fly from Mississippi to Philadelphia, and um, we film, and it's been it's been great. I love working with these guys. It's uh, I've noticed it's enhanced my career because it's it's a great education. It's right. it's taught me how to be on camera, mm -hmm. and. Um, I'm, is, I'm proud of it. So, like, when you when you get approached for things like like that, um, you know, is there is there certain guidelines like where you will and won't like take the product endorsement? Um, I'm very flexible. Mm. If if I love the product and I right. feel strongly and passionately about it, the sky is the limit. Um, I'm at a phase in my life where um, I want to be a little bit more conservative. Um, when I was younger, I was more interested in. Or, or I was I was more flexible. I would have done swimwear or lingerie. It was okay with me because I was a model. I was an entertainer. But now that I'm older, I just don't see the need for it. So as long as it's um, conservative and buttoned up and something I feel passionately about, the sky's the limit. Truly. Right. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, so let's let's get and talk about your product line. Sure. Um, what exactly uh, is it? Is it just footwear that you have? Um, we started out with bridal footwear, mm -hmm. and that's all that we did. And it was very limited, very niche, mm -hmm. and um, it. It took on so well, and we sold to Nordstrom's, Nordstrom.com, Belk, um, that we decided to expand the brand. So I started with bridal, and now I have daywear. I have boots, cowboy boots, over-the-knee boots with sequins that are really fun, and now we're doing handbags. So we have handbags to add to our collection, and uh, we're quickly moving into accessories and apparel. So that's the next, nice. the next thing. So, so how did like so you got into doing the uh, the bridal footwear? Mm -hmm. um, where did that idea come from to, to do 
like the bridal thing. Well, just, when, uh, when you start a fashion label, it's, it's easy to just come out with anything. Mm -hmm. But the problem is being accepted, because why are you unique, or why are you different? And um, I always knew that as an entertainer, I had to have an angle, why I was different than every other model out there. And um, my agents always kind of um, pushed me as uh, the vixen, the kind of um, sassy gal. Um, who was sexy but also educated and um, now I'm um, leaning less towards sexy and more towards educated. I like right. that angle. So with the, um, the fashion label we wanted to have something for brides. We felt that bridal footwear was um, very tame, very traditional, so we wanted to make it a little bit interesting, exciting. So we embellished the shoes and put rhinestones and wrote I do and put hearts and made them exciting so the shoes are exciting. Um, and, and that worked and that was our entrance into the market. And once I was once we saturated the market and became known, it was easy for us to expand and mm -hmm. grow the brand and make it more relevant um, on a more lifestyle level. I got you. Um, <clears throat> was the, uh, was the, the, the transition from like the, the beginnings with the bridal footwear to the expansion, was it a long period of time? Was there a lot of struggle with it or I mean, were you accepted by the public with open arms? I was very quickly accepted by the public, which I was um, very thankful for because mm -hmm. you never know. Right. <laughs> you yeah. never know. So with the shoes, we were very widely received. And um, so far, so good. I'm actually doing better with my boots, my Western boots, mm -hmm. than I did with my bridal. And my bridal is doing very well. So the boots are just, it's, a, it's just incredible. I can't mm -hmm. believe it. It's, it's exciting. And I think it's because boots you can wear with anything. Right. You can wear boots with jeans, with a dress, with anything. So I've it's a more keep, versatile. I've got to keep you away from the wife because I mean, we'll be right. We can make yeah, yeah. She's going to want stuff. everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, you don't need to go to Lauren's website. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm only kidding. No, uh, no. So tell me what you have here today. Um, today, this is a new pump. I mean, this is brand new. It still has the style code in it, which it won't when the shoe comes out. So that just shows you how new it is. Um, it has the Lauren Jones label. And um, what's new right now is contrast, color blocking and contrast. Mm -hmm. So you have the nude, which you can wear with anything, and then the black kind of lace contrast. Right. Um, and then on a platform. Platforms are still really popular. Mm -hmm. um, we don't see these styles going anywhere are going away anytime soon. Right. So um, this just kind of subtle detail is great for the holidays. Let me see that. Sure. These nice. are straight out of my factory, so they're not 100% really? perfected yet. Oh, they're, they're nice. They're Thank very, you. very nice. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So <coughs> how, how is the, uh, the design industry for you? I mean, is, it, is that something that you're going to keep pursuing and pushing the envelope with uh, for sure. you know, more clothes and different yes. avenues? Yes, I can't wait to do denim and um, stockings and leggings and mm. I love to do um, swimwear at some point, um, mm. conservative fashionable swimwear that's very wearable but that doesn't make you feel self-conscious. As a woman shopping for swimwear is one of the most grueling things. It's just you, it, you never feel good. I mean it doesn't matter how thin or how great your body is, buying the perfect swimsuit is difficult. So right. I'd love to come out with something that everybody looks great in yeah. um, for every size, every every height just where you feel beautiful when you're on the beach right so that's important to me yeah that that I, I could see that really really expanding you know appealing to um, women like that because I I do I do see a lot of uh, pressure for that you know that perfect look you know in society and stuff like that and to have something a product where everybody feels comfortable and they go out and they can enjoy themselves and you know, be, absolutely yeah that'd be a really really great thing thank you well every woman has insecurities so to to help women feel confident is yeah. important to my brand. All right, thank you, Lauren. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about um, the purse um, and some other stuff that you have going on. Um, in the meantime, stay tuned, and we'll be right back with Lauren Jones. Make sure you check out laurenjonescollection.com. Exposure TV, Tuesday, 6 p.m. and Saturday, 6.30 a.m. on Comcast Cable, Channel 18, Head Network. For more information on any of Lauren Jones Collection, go to www.laurenjonescollection.com. Exposure TV is sponsored and produced by Peaches of On Location TV.
Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV DJ Rain. And if you're just tuning in, my guest today is Lauren Jones. Lauren, we talked about your shoes. We talked about some of the print ads that you've been in, product endorsements, um, film. Um, tell me about tell me about the prices, right? You know, I've been you know I was a fan of that for a long time. Well, you know, it's really funny because I remember being in high school and watching The Price is Right, mm -hmm. and I would always stare at the girls because I thought they were so pretty. Mm -hmm. And um, never in a million years did I ever think that I would end up as a Barker's Beauty or model on The Price is Right. And so um, I had moved out to Los Angeles, and my agent had called me and said, you've been requested to go and audition for Price is Right. And I said, no way. So I said, what do I need to bring? And they said, you're going to need to bring a one-piece bathing suit. All the girls wear a one-piece bathing suit and high heels. And there are these two producers that stand with a clipboard, very professional. And you walk in one by one, and each girl has to walk forward in the, in the bathing suit and backwards. And they just make a little check or not a check, and then you leave, and that's it. They don't even say anything to you. So I was terrified. And so are the checks bad or good? Well, you don't know, because right. like maybe this day that they're picking, there's no check if, if you're getting it, and then there's a check if you're getting X'd out, you know? Uh -huh. So all you know is they have a clipboard, and you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. You don't know what they're thinking. And so I had just moved to L.A., and I, all I brought with me out there was like one dress, one pair of pants, one top, and a bikini. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have a one-piece. So the, the criteria was to wear a one-piece, and I had a bikini. So my mom always says, well, the reason you got it was because you wore a bikini, but, um, and everybody else had a one-piece on. But that was actually to my disadvantage because I was going against the rules. Right. And so um, I walked up there, and I, was just, I just kind of went for it, you know, like I do with a lot of things. And, um, <laughs> Sometimes you have to do that. I know, and so I was so nervous, and I'm like holding in my stomach and hoping that I look okay, and all these girls are gorgeous. I mean, again, I just feel like I don't compare. They look so gorgeous to me. Mm -hmm. So I get up there in my bikini. It was a blue two-piece, and I walked, and I walked back. They made no expression, and I thought for sure I bombed, I failed. There's no way. And I got a call back, mm -hmm. and on the call back, I wore the same bikini because I didn't. I still hadn't had time or no money to go out and buy one piece at this phase. This was early on in my career, and um, I did the same walk for Bob Barker. And then it was narrowed down. It was like myself and a couple other girls, and they were even more gorgeous than the first batch of women. And I thought for sure, there's no way I'm getting this. So since I'm not going to get this, I'm going to go and say hello to Bob Barker and just meet him. So I walked over and I shook his hand and I said, hi, Bob, it's nice to meet you. I'd love to take a photo with you. And he said, sure, I'd love to. And um, he said I was the only individual who came up and talked to him. And he said because he enjoyed my personality, he was like, hire her. And so nice. I ended up um, becoming a Barker's Beauty on The Price is Right. And I did that for a couple of years and loved it. It was so much fun. Really? So much fun. Mm -hmm. um, and then Baywatch. Yes. One of my all-time favorite shows. <laughs> yes, Baywatch has been around for forever, and they have this cast, this rotating cast. I mean, as you know, there was Pamela Anderson and Carmen Electra and so many famous mm -hmm. people. And I got a call to audition for the, the fitness series, and I said, absolutely, and um, ended up booking it. And um, it was actually going to be split between me and another girl. They wanted a blonde and a brunette to share the lines. And um, the girl, was, she was lovely, but um, had some trouble delivering her lines. And I saw it as an opportunity to take, to take, take advantage of this mm -hmm. opportunity to, to take on this huge endeavor. Right. And I spoke to the director, and he said, Lauren, you know, she's just unable to, to get all the lines. Can you, can you take over? And I said, absolutely. So I went home that night, and I just memorized everything. I just read and read and studied. And the next day, I came in there, and I just knocked it out of the park, and I did the whole series. So um, they gave me the title. Of the, of the series, so it's Baywatch Beachbody Workout with Lauren Jones, and it could have been just Baywatch Beachbody Workout with these yeah. two co-hosts, and I got the whole thing, and I was so excited because I worked so hard, and I tried, yeah. and I went for it, another opportunity that I just, I took advantage of the opportunity, and um, it, worked. Awesome. it worked out, and it was so much fun. We got to film on Zuma Beach in Malibu, California, really? and we got to do the actual running scenes, the da David Hasselhoff running through the water with the little, you know, life. Mm -hmm lifesavers and it was a lot of fun. It must, have, must have been so much work, much hard work. A lot of work. No, I'm just kidding. I, a I lot of work. It was a lot of work. Yeah. It was a, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, lines. Yeah. And when you're filming, believe it or not, when you're in the elements, it was, it was actually kind of chilly on the beach and the sun was in my eyes and you have to just smile and pretend like everything's perfect. So yeah. I bet you that water was cold. The water was cold. Yeah. And there were a lot of lines, <laughs> <laughs> long days of filming, but at the end of the day, it's always worth it. It's a lot of fun. So, so about how many hours a day did you work uh, doing, doing sets like that? When 
I always have worked 18 hour days. Um, whenever I'm on set, it's usually 18 hours with a couple breaks here and there, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, so nobody can say in showbiz that people don't work because I know like hours oh, and hours yeah. and hours. Oh, we work. It yeah. is, there are times where your feet hurt, you mm. have a headache, you're hungry. Sick. And you just keep going. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to pretend like everything's fine. <laughs> so it's called Ten. acting. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about uh, your purse. I know we talked about your shoes and your uh, footwear. Yes. Uh, and you're expanding out to the purse. Uh, yes. Handbags and apparel. Handbags and apparel. And accessories. Thanks, so um, this is one of the fabulous purses that we're doing for the holidays. Um, it's got three straps. You can wear this strap. Or there's also a strap on the inside that you can attach that's longer. Oh, nice. Um, and so sequins are really popular this season. Mm -hmm. So we have gold, black, and silver. So, And these are all on the website at laurenjonescollection.com. So your ideas for, um, like, some of your products, where, like they, do you have inspiration, like, with uh, a team where they come in straight from you? or? Oh, I have a team. I have a business partner. I have, I have a very large team. I don't think it's just me. I, I couldn't do this without the people mm -hmm. that I work with. Um, my direct business partner, his name is Av Goodman, mm -hmm. and um, he worked for a company called Martinez Valero for 25 years, and he was the president. So um, when I met him, he had so much knowledge, and um, he has ideas, I have ideas, um, and we design together. He helps me. I mean, a lot of times I'll come up with something just too whimsical, and he'll say, oh, okay, let's do over the top. Let's right. rein it in. Let's make it, make it a product that people can buy because mm -hmm. um, I have big dreams, so I want to do all kinds of things. Right. I want feathers and rhinestones <laughs> and <laughs> everything. So um, he is everything. I mean, he, I, I, I have no brand without Off right. Goodman, so he's been wonderful. So where do, you, where do you see the brand going in the future? Definitely expanding. I want to be a full lifestyle collection. Mm -hmm. um, I want to do bath and body products. I'd love to do... Um, fun contemporary casuals, denim, as I mentioned before, and um, even linens. We're looking at bed linens, um, sheets, and comforters, and pillows, and home goods. See, so. I'm, I'm looking at the next like powerhouse woman from Mississippi. I love it. With, you know, <laughs> with all the stuff that you have planned. I mean, that is, I mean, that is really, really great. Thank you. Um, and I know, like, you know, for some like the young girls that are watching that, you know, have role models and and look up to you, especially. You know, what kind of advice can you give them? about entering into their own business and or whatever they need to do in life to succeed? Dream big first. You have to have big dreams to start. And then I told you earlier today, showing up is half the battle. You always have to show up when you say you're going to be somewhere, you be there. And um, believing in yourself and persistence. I mean, never give up. Look at Abraham Lincoln. He failed so many times before he was ever even elected as president. Um, Winston Churchill, one of his famous quotes is, never, 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 never give up. Mm -hmm. So um, even when you fail, I mean, I've had many failures, and so um, you're going to fail 10 times before you have one great success. Right. So just keep going, and, and when you hear no, there's a yes for every no. Yeah. I mean, one, one of my mottos has been, you know, if you've never failed anything, you never really tried. Absolutely. So, um, it's been a real pleasure having you on the show. Oh, um, thank you. It's an honor for me. Thank you. Yeah, I, re I really appreciate it. But if there's any contact information you want to get out there, uh, your website again. Sure. Um, just let us know what that is. Okay, the website is laurenjonescollection.com mm -hmm. and um, you can view all the styles and exciting news going on there and also um, our retailers, Angie's Local in Jackson in the Renaissance, mm -hmm. um, Boots and More on High Street sells uh, the Lauren Jones brand and uh, Nordstrom.com, Belk has been a great supporter of the brand and um, just check out the website. Nice. Alright, well we're going to wrap this up. Uh, and just keep keep me posted on what you know what you have going on. I and, will. And let me know um, how how things are going with the brand and where you're going. And, Thank you. Uh, so we can keep tabs on you. Well, thanks so much for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you. And that wraps it up for Exposure TV with Lauren Jones. Uh, stay tuned for. <laughs>